Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Derek Ruby Show. And this is my spoiler review of Scream 6. Now, as an audience member, the number one thing that's vitally important is the opening of a film. And Scream 6 manages to pull that off fantastically. We do see the typical ghost face killing a victim right off the bat, but the difference this time around is Ghostface reveals himself. It was a genuine surprise. In fact, I looked at my stepson and said, well, hey, I figured out who the killer is. And we both had a little laugh about it. But what the movie does next is the real Ghostface, or Ghostface, or however you want to say it, they actually kill the first Ghostface that we see in the beginning of the film. I personally thought that was a creative and different way to start things off, and I was very impressed with it. But the next big positive is the brutality in this movie. It is turned up to 11. As you've seen in the trailers, Ghostface shoots people with a shotgun. He's chasing people on subways. Which brings me to my third positive, the New York setting. I've heard other people have mixed things to say about this, but I'll tell you this much, Ghostface wasn't on a boat half the movie. They really take advantage of the setting. You got Ghostface chasing people down the street, Ghostface chasing people into convenience stores, people running away from Ghostface on high-rise buildings happen to escape from one window to another. It's very exciting. It keeps you gripped and compelled. And I really enjoyed that they took advantage of the New York setting. And if there was anything else positive to say about this movie, I think the acting overall was pretty solid. There's nobody that really stood out to me, but... It's a horror movie, and I think that these people did a really good job. Now we'll move on to the negatives, and boy, there are a lot of them. Now, Scream is known for its meta-commentary. Every movie's got some meta-commentary where they either explain the rules of the horror movies or they explain sequels or something, and this time they decided to explain franchises. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but it just did not work for me. I don't know what they were thinking, I really feel like it was just the writers trying to say, hey, this is the new Scream actors and legacy characters aren't important. But it doesn't matter how many times you say that. Of course they are. And speaking of legacy characters, and one I'm just starting to get tired of is Gail. Every single Scream movie, Gail comes back and she's the hardcore bitch reporter again. Then the other people in the movie are pissed off at her. They have a little fight. And then next thing you know, Gail's apologizing and everything's forgiven and she's trying to help everybody. You know, if they're just going to keep doing this, why not just make her the ghost face? That would be a twist that we all wouldn't see coming. Then there's our other legacy character, Kirby. She's just there to be a red herring. In fact, the entire movie, I was hoping, please let it be her. And of course they didn't do that. She was just there to give a little fan service and make her red herring to try to confuse the audience. And that's one of my other problems with the movie. Trying to figure out who the ghost face killers is just not that difficult for most people. Now, I purposely wasn't trying to figure it out, but I kind of had an idea of who it was. And I just kept saying, please, no, no, don't let it be this character. Don't let it be this one person. And it was. It was actually three people. But still, I figured out the main one. And I think that that's a problem. Besides all the inconsistencies between the sizes of the ghost face and everything, some of the stuff that they did in this movie made absolutely no sense. You guys have seen the trailers for the subway scene. Mindy gets stabbed by one of the ghost face, and the other character with her is also a ghost face. Yet, he helps her. He doesn't make sure that she dies. He helps her off the train and yells for help, and then she gets taken to the hospital. What the fuck? If he's a ghost face... Why wouldn't he make sure she's dead? It makes absolutely no sense. That plot hole aside, it kind of brings me to my whole point about the main actors, or as they call them, the core four. They really push this idea of all the new actors being the core four. Because I guess that will stick with everybody. But the problem with the core four is this. By the end of the movie, they should be the terrible three, or double trouble, or something. Because none of them actually die. That's right, this movie has the brutality ramped up to 11, but it's all sizzle and no steak. All the characters that get killed are either new characters or people you've never met that just happen to be innocent bystanders. And to me, that's a huge negative on this movie. As a matter of fact, it keeps this movie from being one of the best Scream films of all time. It could have really been on par with the original. 
But in my opinion, they fucked that whole thing up. And it's not just the core four. That big fight scene you see in the trailer with Gale and Ghostface, she gets stabbed like a billion times. And she survives. Now the other character, Chad, in the movie, he gets stabbed by two Ghostface and probably gets stabbed twice as much as Gale. He doesn't die. Kirby, she gets stabbed pretty much the same way she did in the last movie, and she survives as well. It makes you wonder, what does all this matter if your main characters never die? This entire movie falls apart in the final act. Now, movies are all about suspending your disbelief and trying to live that moment and watch the film and just be into it. The problem is it's not just the main cast members that don't die. All these different ghost faces that you have, all these different other characters, they get stabbed a bunch and they get right back up. It's almost as if getting stabbed is the equivalent of getting your toe stubbed. It seems to me that the stakes should just be a little bit higher. At one point, one of the ghost face killers gets stabbed right in the mouth, right in the throat. There is no way that this guy is surviving. But a couple minutes later, just so we can have one more dramatic scene, here he comes. Not only is he running at them with his knife, but he roars at them. I'm going to tell you this much. Even if I could suspend my disbelief that he survived getting stabbed right in the mouth and in the throat, there's no way he's making any sounds. Now, while the movie does play on your nostalgia and it shows you all these different ghost face outfits and all this memorabilia from the past, which is really cool, mind you, we still have that whole scenario of Sam having hallucinations about her dead father and him wanting to kill and her not wanting to do it. You know, people really didn't like that in the last movie and they still don't like it. I don't know if they're just trying to say she has a mental illness or if they're saying she's haunted, but it's time to move on from this. Otherwise, just make her ghost face in the next movie. But they're not going to do that because they show her dropping the mask at the end. And speaking of the end, this movie has an after the credits scene and it is the dumbest fucking one I've ever seen. So do not waste your time waiting for it. Which by contrast to that, they have an opening scene with the cast thanking you for watching their movie. Very much not needed. Now, before all the scream stands out there get pissed off at me and want to offer my head up to Ghostface, I want you all to know that I really did enjoy this film. Despite all of its negatives, despite the shortcomings of the movie, its brutality and its setting are enough to overcome its negatives. And it made for a hell of a movie experience, even if the 3D sucked. It's just really sad, though, because like I stated before, this could have been the best Scream sequel of all time. Instead, what you got is a pretty decent horror movie with a lot of brutality. So my final verdict, I give Scream 6 a core 3.5 out of 5. Thank you guys for watching the incredible, tremendous Derek Ruby Show. Good night.